Welcome everyone, everybody to this week's Onik Shabbat. Some very interesting uh, discussions and lessons about Parshach Noach, Noach, the famous story Noah and his Ark. But uh, first, of course, we'll have our annual Shalom, our weekly Shalom Aleichem recital. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Yashoharez, Malachi Yehelion. Mihi melech malche amlochim akadosh baruchu. Shalom aleichem melech yashoreit melech yehelion. Mihi melech malche amlochim akadosh baruchu. Boachem le shalom, alachay shalom, alachay elyon. Mihi melech, malachay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Boachem le shalom, alachay shalom, alachay elyon. Mihi melech malchay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Baruchu ni lishalom alachay ashalom alachay elyon. Mihi melech malchay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Varchoni le shalom, alachay shalom, alachay elyon. Mihi melech malachay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Varchoni le shalom, alachay shalom, alachay elyon. Mihi melech malchay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Varchu nile shalom alachay shalom alachay elyon. Mihi melech malchay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Teisrem le shalom, alachay ya shalom, alachay elyon. Mihi melech malachay amlochim akadosh baruchu. Teisrem le shalom, alachay ya shalom, alachay elyon. Mihi melech malchay amlochim akadosh baruchu. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Noach, Parsha Noah. And we learn about the famous story of Noah and the ark. And the story begins that Noah is seen as the only righteous person in the land. The land which is, has gone completely corrupt, theft and stealing and very, very other immoral activities. And God decides that he needs a restart on the world. And he instructs Noah to build an ark. He builds an ark. And it takes Noah 120 years to build this ark. Noah lived a very long life. The people of those generations, the Torah tells us, lived long lives. And Noah built the ark for 120 years. And one of the questions which arises is, obviously the entire structure, going back thousands of years to build an ark that could withstand a flood of this magnitude of the world, Obviously, it was a miraculous event. It was miraculous that Noah was able to single-handedly build such a boat, single-handedly build such an edifice to hold all the animals in the world, all the species in the world, and to last so long. And obviously, it was God's uh, miracle that caused it to happen. So then why couldn't Noah just build it in 20 minutes, an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year, five, years, ten years, a hundred years? It took Noah a hundred years to build something which ultimately needed God's hand and miraculously to, in order to be created. So one of the answers given is the following, that over the course of this 120 years, what happened across the world? People would go and say to Noah, Noah, what are you doing over there? He's like, I'm building a boat. Why are you building a boat? Well, God told me he's going to destroy the world with a massive flood, and this boat will save myself and my family and the animals of the world. And people were mocking at Noah and mocking and mocking. But Noah kept to it. And part of the idea is that over time, the hope was, was the more people speak to Noah about the ark, 
they say they they take a look at themselves and say, hey, you know, he's got a point over here. There's so much stealing. There's so much treacherous acts across the world. Maybe God does want to destroy us. And it came to a point even finally after 120 years where the ark was built and Noah started gathering everyone and started to reign. And still Noah offered them a chance to repent, to do tshuva, to change their ways. If you promise to God you change your ways, he won't destroy the world. But they're so stubborn in their ways that they decided not to repent until it was too late and they all were destroyed and the entire mankind was destroyed except for Noah and his family. And one of the lessons we see is that sometimes we're very, very stuck in our ways. We feel we're doing something which is right. Or even if we know we're doing something wrong, but we can't really change it or we don't think we could change it. And the lesson that from Noah, one of the many, many lessons is obviously there's always room to change. There's always room to improve. Don't be so stubborn in your ways. God gave the whole world 120 years to change their ways. And only after the final stubbornness of everyone there was when he had to destroy the world. And that's one of the lessons we learned from Noah that even when we do things which are wrong, even if we do things which are, may not be appropriate, but there's always room to change as long as we're not so stubborn. And we have to give up a little bit of our stubbornness, a little bit of doing things just for the principle of it to really see the better good in the world. <laughs> So we just spoke a few minutes ago about how Noah was unable to influence the people around him to do good. He tried and he tried speaking to them, but they were stubborn in his ways. But also we have to ask the question the opposite. How was Noah able to stay good? Imagine in a room with 20 people and 19 of them were just stealing from each other, hurting each other, beating each other up, and this becomes the way of the world everywhere you go. Think about it. If every man on the street would just do what was in their own mind to do what they felt was the right thing to do. And that's how the world was going on for so many years. And yet Noah was the only one to be righteous, the only one to say, you know what, Noah and his family, of course, you know what, we're going to do the right thing. How did Noah go ahead and sustain his belief in God and his trust in God that he was doing the right thing? And one of the answers given is very, very fascinating. Because a person, when a person acts a certain way, a lot of times it comes from the fact that they don't believe in themselves. If you don't believe you could do it, if you don't believe you could sustain yourself to the pressure, then you fall and you crumble and you follow people who maybe you should not follow. But when you have a true belief in yourself, you're doing the right thing, we learn from Noah that nothing could change that. If the whole world is doing something wrong, but you decide, you know what, I could be the one to stand up, I could be the one to do the right thing, then you can do it. And there's never a point where we say, you know what, it's just too hard for me. If everyone else is doing it, I'll do it myself. One of the lessons we learn from Noah is the exact opposite. You can be the only individual, even in a group of people, not acting the way they should, you could always stand up for yourself and do the right thing. Vahamshila <laughs> 
Minasko si bio macro bio hado avkid ruhi bio si shan bio ihira bio ruhi give bio si hado shem li bilo ira. Everyone should have a happy and healthy Shabbat, a happy and healthy weekend, a great weekend. We'll see everybody next week.